Hello, and welcome to Women Developing Brilliance. I'm your host, Casey Rossi. It's my great pleasure to present interesting stories of creative women sharing their message and lighting up the world with their presence and offerings. Get ready to be inspired. You can learn more about creating a business that you love by visiting kcrossi.com. Enjoy. Thank you for tuning in today. I know that you have many choices when it comes to spending your time, and I want you to know that I value you and I appreciate you. Today, resilience is top of mind for obvious global circumstances. I've always been curious as how some people handle adversity better than others. We're going to explore what it means to be resilient and how to cultivate that trait if you feel you could use a little support in that area. First off, are we born resilient? Most experts agree that resiliency is an innate human characteristic that we can learn, build, grow, and develop. I think that's good news. Resilience is defined as the ability to recover quickly from difficulties. If you're walking the planet, then I'm confident that you've experienced difficult times in your life. Perhaps it's been a divorce, death of a loved one, abuse, or something else. Acknowledging the challenging times doesn't give them power. It actually brings them in the light and allows us to connect deeply with others. We can self-identify when someone has been through a similar experience. We get inspired by others who have lifted themselves out of the ashes like a phoenix rising. We get goosebumps and are motivated when we hear rags to riches stories. In fact, I was just listening to a speaker, Lisa Nichols. She was on the Agape International Spiritual Center stage, and her talk was called Unleash, Ignite, Elevate, Then Rinse and Repeat. She shared how she was once on welfare, living in a bad part of LA, praying and hoping that she'd get enough food to feed her son. She went on to say that she had to shift her mind and start acting like the woman she knew she was all along. By the end of her speech, she had the audience hand in hand, singing and dancing and saying, hello, and yes, yes, with vigor. It was so powerful. When we hear stories of people in the depths of their darkest times, digging deep and finding their way, not only to crawl out of their own holes, but to rise above and become beacons of light, creating inspiration waves and touching the hearts of of thousands of individuals. Now, perhaps your goal isn't of that magnitude, and that's okay. We all have a purpose, some are quieter than others, and that doesn't diminish its power and greatness. There is beauty and diversity, and all aspects should be celebrated. So let me get closer to the point of today's message, cultivating holistic resilience to remain balanced in times of crisis. So what do I mean by holistic? That the solution goes beyond just the body. It goes beyond just the mind. That it is an all-encompassing synergy of body, mind, emotions, and spirit. To me, they all need to be firing to be effective. If one area is weak, the system is weak. It is a network. So, of course, each person is an individual with their own set of karma. How we were raised and who we had to model perseverance and emotional strength makes a difference. It just does. That's not to say that you're stuck with the cards that you were dealt with. It's just a measure of realism and an opportunity to understand that it's totally possible and never too late to cultivate resilience, even if it's not your immediate skill set. So let's start off with the spirit part of the whole. To me, when I go through my mental roster of people that inspire me, the ones like Lisa Nichols, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, Dr. Sue Mortar, and Gabrielle Bernstein, to name a few, they all have something in common, a confident knowing that there is something beyond this physical material world, that their faith has carried them through the eye of the needle and back again. When I observe people falling apart, they generally are people who haven't established a strong foundation to stand on, a faith in a higher power, a support system, or a network to lean on. And then shit gets real. And it's understandable that things feel like they're unraveling before our very eyes. In order to cultivate holistic resilience, 
we must have a power greater than ourselves to trust. Because let's face it, our mind has no sense and no feeling. It's like a computer. Think of it like the hard drive and all the messages and information and education. That's the software. Without the programming, it's empty matter. So what is it that goes beyond the mind? It's our heart and spirit. Heart and spirit are the essence of who we truly are. It's what keeps the breath flowing throughout and the blood pumping, our life force, if you will. So let me ask you, how do you nurture your spirit? If you don't have a current practice in place, it is not too late to start one. It could be simply adding prayerful thought. It could be connecting with your breath and gratitude. It could be setting aside 30 minutes to sit in meditation, or it could be going even deeper. Looking, asking, longing for an answer to fulfill your heart's calling. And only you know for sure what you need. And perhaps that area you're really strong in. And faith is a pillar of your existence. And that's cool too. We all come into this world with a different set of circumstances. To be resilient in the spiritual facet, it always helps me to look at the bigger picture. Know that others have walked before me and they've been through worse times, and it's all going to be okay. Trust provides security, and faith has a power unto itself, and it has the power to get you through the muck and out the other side. So let's move into emotional resiliency. The mental, emotional side of things is huge, and that may sound oversimplified, but in reality, if we are off mentally or emotionally, then what else really matters? Anxiety, depression, self-doubt, and apathy can make you feel helpless and hopeless, and that is never a good combination. So I do just want to clarify that I am not talking about serious medical conditions here, chemical imbalances, or challenges that need medical attention or prescription drugs. I mean everyday emotional roller coasters that can tank your productivity and momentum. How can one develop mental and emotional resilience? In a word, it's mindset. We make thousands of choices every day of our life. How we perceive what's happening around us is up to us. It's like we are the photographer and we get to choose if we want the picture to be in black and white or in color with a sepia filter or panoramic. Each particle of our reality has an internal representation. We are coding, if you will, every second of every day. Codes that act as imprints in our neural network and can be brought up by memory and cellular recall. Super fascinating, right? And in that, we have the power to change our perception of reality, which in turn changes our thoughts which changes our emotions, which then changes our actions, and of course, shifts our results. Do you see how very powerful this chain of events is? Let me break that down again for you. There's a situation. We have thoughts about that situation. Those thoughts govern our actions. The actions or lack of actions then, in turn, bring about our results or lack thereof. It is a flow that is consistent repeatable, and happening to each of us every day without us really even being aware of it. So let's look at a real-life situation here to give it some context. The situation that we are all dealing with right now is the coronavirus. If you were to allow your mind to lead you through the thought trail of disempowering thoughts, thoughts like, what if I catch the virus? What if I can't make money to survive? How do you think that that will affect your emotions? Immediately, and I can even feel my heart tensing up right now and my chest constricting, your emotions would be filled with anxiety and fear and even panic. From there, your actions would go into fear mode or stockpiling, further stimulating the panic pandemonium. It could spin you into a hopeless depression it could cause you to shut down due to overwhelm. And then what do you think your results would be? Further disconnection, which could turn into reclusiveness, health challenges like high blood pressure and other stress-related issues, distancing from friends and family, and more. Do you see how powerful this cascade of events is? 
All right, so let's take a deep breath. Let's change the channel here because this is a yucky space. And thank you for staying with me because I promise that I won't leave you here with this scenarios of feelings, okay? So we have the same COVID-19 situation at hand. Let's flip the switch. Let's change the channel here. Let's see how it plays out when we choose to have better feeling thoughts to start the chain of events. So we choose to see this as a wake-up call, as a way to appreciate the world around us, our blessings, our families, our friends. We think about how we can see this lesson and all the lessons that are coming up with this challenge at hand. We ask ourselves, How can I show up for myself and my tribe in a powerful and meaningful way? This brings about emotions of deep gratitude, love, empowerment, excitement to serve, and peace knowing that there's a bigger picture. These emotions now call about the next phase of actions. We begin to get creative and start thinking of ways to simplify our life, connect with our family, listen with greater intent, and turn within for intuitive messages and spiritual guidance. These actions bring about results of great magnitude, creating a positive ripple effect of positivity and inspiration. Your light shines brightly and ignites others' light, and they continue to show up in their community and become grounded forces, able to support and inspire others around them, and it continues in this way. I don't know about you, but I'll choose scenario two any day of the week. And here's the cool thing. It all started with your choice of how you were going to think about the situation. Remember, the situation, one that we can often not change, is exactly the same in each of those scenarios. Remember that how you perceive the world is up to you. You get to change the channel to what's going to serve your greater good and the good of all those around you. Is this making sense? Lastly is the physical facet. How do we ensure that our body will be able to be flexible and snap back when needed? Being proactive is the best way to support our body's ability to ward off disease. Simply things like breathing deeply and intently to strengthen our lungs, drinking plenty of fresh water to stay hydrated and aid the body's ability to assimilate water-soluble vitamins and minerals, moving to keep blood and lymph flowing versus stagnating, and reducing our sugar intake. WebMD says eating or drinking too much sugar curbs immune system cells that attack bacteria. This effect lasts for hours after downing a couple of sugary drinks. Isn't that amazing? So the simple act of swapping out your sweet tea for a cup of hot herbal tea, it's going to have big benefits. Now, we've heard these tips many times, and it's not new information, but how many of us really do the basics every day? I can honestly say that I don't. Other things like drinking hot liquids with ginger, garlic, or fresh lemon juice are all immunity boosters. I feel going back to simple basics is where we are heading next. How can we prep our bodies to maintain stamina by practicing some kind of endurance exercise? Now, this could be yoga, it could be a brisk walk up a steep hill, or it could be CrossFit if that's your thing. But exercising the muscle memory of being challenged and riding our personal edges and then returning back to a normal homeostasis This is going to have tremendous value in the physical resilience category. This is good training for times when things are out of our control. We can all practice this now. I know I have room to trim off excess, simplify, and lean into minimalism for the fun of it. And heck, why not gamify it? Not because we have to, but because we want to as an experiment. This is another great way to build tolerance. When the choice is ours, we go through the course and come back again. So if there does come a time when we don't have a multitude of options, we can gracefully plug into, this is how we do things now mode, and move on. Change isn't easy. We are human beings wired for comfort. Heck, I am a Taurus girl. I like indulgent food and comforting surroundings. And 
I've also been through a lot in my life. I'm a child of divorce, no stranger to alcoholics, use food to cope, gone through times of depression and burnout, and have experienced bankruptcy. And my friends, I can say that I've made it to the other side. I can confidently say that it would not be possible if I didn't have a strong spiritual foundation, positive psychology, and a diehard attitude to persevere. When we respect and address every aspect of ourselves, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, our whole being can work as one and we are strong and resilient because of it. If I can do it, so can you. I'm a believer if one can achieve, all can achieve. Draw on your inner strengths and also don't be afraid to rely on your outer resources as well in your times of need. You've got this, my friend. Until next time, breathe joy. I hope you enjoyed today's episode on women developing brilliance. If so, head on over to Apple iTunes and subscribe to this podcast. And I'd be grateful if you could leave a review or rating so more people can benefit from these inspirational stories about the solopreneur journey. Thank you.